We are charged to protect these kids. I'm a police officer for North Minneapolis and coach for the North High High School. These kids don't trust cops. It's definitely a difficult time right now. Kind of weird, but I'm building bonds with police. The violence is nonstop. You can hear the gunshots. When them lights flicker at 7 o'clock, you ain't hearing none of that. What up, y'all? Happy New Year's from all the smoke. In the new year, we're still riding with DraftKings Sportsbook because they've been there since the beginning. Basketball season's almost at its midpoint, but the NFL playoffs are right around the corner. Look no further than DraftKings Sportsbook for the can't-miss deals during the NFL playoffs. Call your new customers, sign up using the promo code SMOKE, and bet just $5 on any NFL game. From there, you instantly get $200 in bonus bets. It's that easy. You can use the bonus bets for parlays, player props, straight bets, you name it. DraftKings has it all. There's nothing better than chilling on the couch watching football, so why not get some money while you're doing it? So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use the promo code SMOKE, bet $5 on any NFL playoff game, and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Every Friday, we're teaming up with DraftKings Sportsbook to make an all the smoke same game parlay. Head on over to the DraftKings Sportsbook app now to see who we picked. And if you like them, you can ride along with us. I feel like it's going to be a big 2023 coming for all the smoke, same game parlays. Don't miss it. What up, everybody? Before we get into this episode, I want to give a big shout out to Legends. Without them, this episode wouldn't have been possible. We're teaming up with them to give new customers 15% off on all goods at Legends.com. Use the code ATS15 at checkout and secure your discount. You can scan the QR code or click the link in the description. Hope you guys enjoy this Magic Johnson episode. So listen, we got to rule it all the smoke. It's a little different than other shows. Jack, what you drinking? Vitamin water, my okay. brother. Okay. <laughs> all right, just want to make sure there ain't no vodka in there. No. So, so we got some different rules here. So if your phone goes off, Jack, what do they got to do? You have to do kush-ups. My brother, please explain to them what kush-ups is. So a kush-up is you have to put a joint in your mouth yes. and do 10 push-ups with it. <laughs> Inhale, exhale. Inhale, Inhale exhale. exhale. <laughs> so we tell everyone that just to make sure you turn your phones off. Because yes. we want to make sure we have a great interview tonight. So if your phone rings, tonight. trust me, we don't run out of tree. You yeah. will be doing your kush-ups. I brought a whole backpack full <laughs> yeah, of it. So you will be doing kush-ups. We're going to make sure if you don't smoke, <laughs> make sure your phone don't go off because you're going to have to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we here, man. Uh, man, closing out 2022. It's been a, obviously, I'm sure you guys see my brother Jack lost his youngest brother, Snap Marley. So this show is dedicated to him. We want to make sure we continue to rap Jack. Jack's one of the most loving people I've ever met. Jack and I started playing together in 2007. Made NBA history, the first number eight seed to beat in the Mavericks, the number one seed at the time. The following, the very beginning of the following season, my mom died from cancer within 26 days. And Jack was the one person daily that was calling me, coming to smoke with me, bringing me food, checking on me. So for then, we built a brotherhood that'll never be broken. And I just want everyone to make sure they, that they send their love and their prayers out to him and his family right now, obviously going through a hard time. And I appreciate you making you, your bro. way out here. Uh, to I don't really think he needs an introduction. I mean, what can we say about this guy? I mean, legendary basketball player, legendary businessman, a leader, a pillar in the community, someone that made a lot of us fall in love with basketball at a young age. Yes. You know, Magic was the big guard that, you know, a lot of us aspire to be like on and off the court. The only reason I bought Converse. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel you. Because he had a purple and gold yeah, pair. Right? <laughs> I feel you. He said the only reason. But again, well, let's welcome to the show Magic Johnson. I'm gonna stand up. 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 So, Magic, first and foremost, thank you because I know 
you're one of the busiest men in the, in, uh, in the industry, and to give us one of your evenings, we definitely appreciate Thank you for you. coming out tonight. No, I want to congratulate both of you on your show. It's amazing. And also, you know, my prayers go out to you, brother. Thank you and, very much. Uh, I'm so proud of both of you, you know, for where you're taking your brand. This show is amazing. And to have two black men up here doing their thing and then have me sitting here Come on, is, man. is a blessing. And, so then, and then DJ Quick in the building. Doing. We couldn't make it more L.A. for you guys. I mean, we got <laughs> Maddie Johnson and DJ Quick. So, I mean, we hope you guys enjoy the night, man, because we're really excited. Uh, how's life day to day? What's going on with you right now? Everything is going good. I mean, you know, closed out the year strong. We had an unbelievable year as far as my company is concerned. And then health-wise, everything's good. The wife is good. The kids are good. So all that it's been uh, truly a blessing. All right. Magic, I'm going to cut the bullshit and get right to it. How can me and my girl come on the yacht for five weeks in the summertime this <laughs> year? With LL Cool J. Hey, 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 we see Magic on the yacht. Hey, everybody on there. Magic is shooting jumpers on his yacht, lifting weights, going on walks on his yacht. I'm like, God damn, that thing must be huge. <laughs> so you got right to it. Huh? <laughs> right, I'm not going to play with you, Magic. We I gonna, see that. We're going we to talk after about that. Me, me and, yeah, me and Nas have got to make a trip soon. So LeBron is in a unique situation. Uh, he just passed you on the all-time assist mm -hmm. lead, uh, mm -hmm. list, and there's a possibility he can pass Kareem right. in the same year. Can you explain, obviously, the historical significance, but the accomplishment that it is for mm -hmm. someone who is, you know, I think a lot of you. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of you in him. Mm -hmm. um, but what kind of accomplishment it is to, to, to pass you in the assist lead and although we'll talk about it later, if you would have got a full run, I think you would have put the assist bar so high that no one could even sniff it. Mm. But just LeBron's greatness and the, mm. the, the longevity of LeBron. Well, I think that's, that's the key, right? He's been doing it since 18 years old and at a high level and still even today still playing at that high level. But what I really love about LeBron is his basketball IQ and the fact that he makes his teammates better, right? Yes. And he puts them on his back and he can um, will his team to victory, both whether he's scoring or his passing ability, right. and then rebounding as well. And he's always been committed to taking care of his body. Most important. And that's why he's been able to play this long. And his impact will be felt long after he's, he's gone, Absolutely. right? It's only a few guys who have played this game that still have a major impact long after their career. Right. And LeBron will be one of those guys. And so I'm proud of him because also, too, he's built not only his brand on the court, but he's built the brand off the court. Mm -hmm. He's brought his guys along with him, yes. Rich Paul and Maverick, and they've done a, a wonderful job with his business. And so uh, Le and he always lent his voice, yes. especially to causes that affect whether it's athletes or the black community. Mm -hmm. uh, he always stands up and, and, and tell people what's right or wrong or what they're doing, uh, what we should be doing to affect change in our community. You got to right. respect that. That's right. Most, mm -hmm. most guys that's the face of the league don't even dare to jump in that no. category. He Water's does. too hot. No, they always worry about their Brands. brand or they're going to lose endorsements mm -hmm. or what people are going to say. Right. Right. And so uh, he's never been affected by those things. Mm -hmm. What up, y'all? Happy New Year's from all the smoke. In the new year, we'll still ride with DraftKings Sportsbook because they've been there since the beginning. Basketball season's almost at its midpoint, but the NFL playoffs are right around the corner. Look no further than DraftKings Sportsbook for the can't-miss deals during the NFL playoffs. Call your new customers, sign up using the promo code SMOKE, and bet just $5 on any NFL game. From there, you instantly get $200 in bonus bets. It's that easy. You can use the bonus bets for parlays, player props, straight bets, you name it. DraftKings has it all. There's nothing better than chilling on the couch watching football, so why not get some money while you're doing it? So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use the promo code SMOKE, bet $5 on any NFL playoff game, and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Every Friday, we're teaming up with DraftKings Sportsbook to make an all-the-smoke same-game parlay. Head on over to the DraftKings Sportsbook app now to see who we pick. And if you like them, you can ride along with us. I feel like it's going to be a big 2023 coming for all the smoke, same game parlays. Don't miss it. 
NBA Top Shot is where the NBA's biggest fans buy, sell, and earn officially licensed video collectibles. Rip packs or purchase individual limited edition moments from your marketplace to build your ultimate collection. From rookies to legends, now you can flex your fandom by owning the greatest moments of your favorite players and teams. Your collection can even earn a once-in-a-lifetime money-can't-buy experience. NBA Top Shot users have already attended private events with superstars like Klay Thompson, rising stars like Cade Cunningham, and even all-time greats like Magic Johnson. Your entire collection of NBA Top Shot moments never loses quality and are accessible by any device. So they're always at your fingertips. Rep your team, flex your fandom, and own the greatest moments from the NBA, exclusively from NBA Top Shot. Sign up today at nbatopshot.com and kickstart your collection with your first pack. We're back for season four of All the Smoke and very excited to have alongside of us our partner Moneyline. Yeah, Moneyline's family. They've been our ride or die. This year ain't no different. Definitely. And stay locked in because Moneyline is providing dope experiences, prizes, stuff we can't really talk about. But just know, man, when you're messing with Moneyline, they're always providing amazing experiences. They brought me and Jack out to Vegas to experience our first NASCAR event. Moneyline is the only app you'll ever need. Cash advances, credit building, investing, and expert advice. Download the Moneyline app today or visit moneyline.com backslash all the smoke to learn more. Front office, 2017 to 2019, you stepped away. Um, obviously, because I've I, I heard you speak that you felt like you didn't have the power you needed to really make the moves you wanted to move, mm -hmm. make. But you said you had a few regrets about the way you left. Can you speak to those regrets and what they were? Yeah, Matt. You know, I, I had convinced LeBron to sign with the Lakers. Had a great conversation. How did you do that, though? So... <laughs> What's the secret? Hey, hey, especially after we were losing, right? right? Um, when I took over the Lakers, I said in two years, LeBron was going to be a free agent. We were well, well over the salary cap, so I had to get us up under the salary cap by trading a couple guys. And so I knew when I had that meeting with him and Rich Paul here in Los Angeles, I knew what he wanted, right? I knew he wanted to win, number one. But number two, I knew Los Angeles, he could live and live free and drive around and um, live a life that he wanted to live that he couldn't live in Cleveland, mm -hmm. right? Or Miami, because everybody's on top of him. Mm -hmm. And I think because we have so many celebrities here, he could fit right on in. So I told him, I'm gonna build a team that's gonna win a championship, no question about it. But also, too, he's going to build a billion-dollar business mm -hmm. here off the court because we love our celebrities out here. And uh, he bought into it. I said, these are the moves I'm going to make. After I sign you, I'm going to go after. At that time, I thought it was going to be Kawhi because he was the next free agent the mm -hmm. next year. No, nobody knew that Anthony Davis was going to be available for a trade. So I said, I'm going to get you, then I'm going to get Kawhi, and then we often... <laughs> so how... Because I heard Ka it, it, it really came down to the wire. You guys literally almost had Kawhi. Oh, I would have well. had Kawhi. I would have had Kawhi. <laughs> <laughs> no question. I would have had Kawhi. Look, when I, come, when I come in and close a deal... Come on, man. It's done. I, it's, it's done. It's the magic, yeah. it's See, the magic I, man. Listen, man, I, I do my homework, I, my research. <laughs> so when I get you in that room... It's over. I already know what you want, and I'm going to just lay it out to you. Right. Right? And so I knew what LeBron wanted. I laid it out to him. Yeah. He bought into it. I, I would have known what Kawhi wanted. I would have laid it out mm. to him as well. And then we're going to go in and win. And, uh, can you imagine, not taking to cut you off, Magic, yeah. can you imagine LeBron, AD, and Kawhi? That's like, cut it out. I'm just saying, him giving the pitch to come to this team. Him, I mean, MJ, like, you ain't going to say no. To, <laughs> once I find out I'm talking to Magic, I'm just signing. Like, I could, I'll hear you talk, yeah, but come Magic cool. isn't going to talk to me, I'm in. <laughs> Let me get some of that business with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll sign anything. <laughs> Lansing, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Six siblings. Um, I know what it's like m having mother and father work hard jobs just to, just to give you an opportunity to be great. That's right. Talk about growing up in Lansing. Yeah, um... My father worked for General Motors for 30 years. He won an award for never missing a day and never being late. Wow. Yeah. So I was, I, I'm built just <laughs> like him, that. right? Same thing. So 
Because you, know you know they say CP time, a motherfucker, yeah, right? That's right. <laughs> right? You know we got our own time, so for a brother to be on time, that's clap again, <laughs> that, <damn it. laughs> Clap again. Clap again. <laughs> and, and, and to do it for 30 years right. in a row, right? So um, my mother worked for the school cafeteria, so, you know, they stress education. You know, they told me, listen, I, I want you to be great on that basketball court, but I want you to be smart. Right. So you got to get the grades. If you don't get those grades, you can't play. Mm. So I made sure that I applied myself in the books, but also at the same time, when you have that many siblings, man, it was a trip, right? Everybody else had a bike in the neighborhood, and I wanted a bike. And my father was like, Mm-mm, because if I buy one, I got to buy six. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody everybody got to get a bike. Hey, I, got, I got six kids, too. We, they be sharing shit. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. You going to ride the bike on Monday, Tuesday, you get it Wednesday, yeah, Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. Even if I got to change the seat color, make it pink one day for the girl, yeah, exactly. I'm going to ride the same bike. But I tell you what he did to me, man. He said, but I think I got something that can help you get a bike. Mm. So let me take you out to the garage right quick. So he took me out to the garage and he said, let me introduce you to three people you need to meet. I said, okay, cool. That's Mr. Lawnmower, that's Mr. Ray, and that's Mr. Shevel. Now, pick one of them tools up and go make you some money and buy you a bike. And sure enough, that's what I did. That's a great game. And so my father always stressed to me, anything I was going to achieve in life, I was going to have to work for it. So I'm a worker, man. I, I, I love to work. I go to bed early. Like, this is late for me. So mm. I did this for you guys because I Appreciate love you guys yeah. so much. And so it's past your bedtime right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm 8.30 and I'm out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm, I'm up at 4 o'clock every morning. I train for two hours, one with the waist, hour cardio, and then I'm in the office all day. Yeah. So what we have to understand, when you want to build a successful business, you want to make money when people sleeping. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. See, that's what I do. I make money when people sleeping. Mm -hmm. See, and that's what we have to get into. Talk so, that shit. And so for Jeez. me, ain't nothing happening good for me at, after 8.30. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. something may happen good for other, everybody yeah. else yeah. after 8.30. Yeah. Yeah. But not for me. I'm going to sleep so I can get ready for my full day the next day. Mm. Yeah, ain't too much open after 8.30. Y'all know that line. Just for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I grew up. There's a guy named Lee Harmison who used to call me Young Magic because I was a young kid. I used to play with the older kids, and I, I was able to pass at a young age. Mm -hmm. I had to feel for the game. Yeah. We had Chauncey Billups. We had Jason Kidd come on the show, and they all idolized you just like we did. How does it feel for so many players to come up and so many legends of the game to say, well, it started with Magic Johnson mm -hmm. in my career? Well, it feels great. I mean, I just tried to play the game the right way, man. And I love passing that basketball, man, and having it in my hands. I love controlling the action, right? And so uh, being a leader of every team I played on, all, only thing I wanted to do, man, was win. That's it. That's, that's, I just wanted to win. And so uh, nothing in my life has changed. I still want to win today. Mm -hmm. And I still, I'm still the point guard, but I'm just the point guard in my company instead of out on the court. But I would say this. I love the game. Yes. So I played all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that you and I, UCLA, you know, we had so many Ooh, great we moments. we going to get to the way you used to do us at UCLA, <laughs> boy. We're going to get to that a little later. <laughs> but I think those guys are great. And that's that why Paul? I love J. Kidd. I love all of them. <laughs> that sound like Paul. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. He know, too. <laughs> he said, oh, man. <laughs> he know. Paul used to shoot them jumpers. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's, it's all about the love. Nah. You know? We're going to so, get to it. So, you know, when you love the game and, and that becomes contagious to guys coming behind me, that's a blessing. And that means that uh, they respect the way I played, and then look what happened to those two guys you, that right. you talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, they became champions and uh, guys who made their teammates better. What I loved about both of you, you had you excelled at the roles that you both had. Saw in our own role. Yeah, because San Antonio wouldn't have been able to do what they Absolutely did not. without you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank See, you. what Thank you, you did, you. what you did. Thank you. And you, you bought that swag and that, that street 
and then you would kill him with that jumper. <laughs> Ooh, man. Jack wasn't playing, boy. And then when he got rolling, he gave you that look. Yeah. Like, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm over here blushing like a two-year-old. Right? <laughs> and then Matt just lock you all up and stuff, block your side and look at you. Like, come on, yeah, I got you. Yeah. I'm, I'm locking you down. <laughs> and so, you know, when you all, we all just do what we do, right? And so, and then when kids see that, they say, wow, okay, I want to be like him. Mm -hmm. and, and young people are watching YouTube now saying, Wow, especially, I hate to bring color in, but it's true. Black men now know they can do what you're doing. Tell right. our own stories. Right. See, you see what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're opening up this whole path for uh, first former athletes. Yes. They, they can go from the court to what you're doing. Then those who are at home saying, man, I idolize these two guys even more now because they play basketball, but now look what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And now I know I can do it as well. Yeah. So that's a blessing. Well, I think too, because life after basketball, back in your day, back when we first started was a mystery. Yes, right. You know, business wasn't cool to talk about. We mm -mm. didn't talk about investments or anything. No. Nothing about the 401k. It was, it was a lot of guys, once they done, they did, uh, you know, acquired addictions and lost their money. That's right. But to be able to transition from sports I mean, obviously, you're the role model of it, but guys like Jack and I, like, we weren't superstars, although Jack should have been an all-star. He's been blackballed because of the oh, brawl. For sure. But be able to transition, it, it, it's, it, it wasn't as easy as it, we've kind of made it look, mm -hmm. you know, and to be able to transition in media and, and, and open a bunch of doors, like, that kind of stuff didn't happen back in the day. No. A lot of stuff changed, too, when we were able to say, Magic's a billionaire. Oof. Like, as a basketball player, we would felt like we would be, you know Let what I'm saying? Let me hold like, up. It can happen now. Right. Because Magic done it, right. you know what I mean. So right. you really gave us the 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 the, the ability to, to to even fight for it because you got to see it to believe it. You got to see it to believe it. With everything you was dealing with, you still made it happen. Well, I so that's a testament it. to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank because you. a lot of people don't go through nothing and can't pay a bill. Right. You making stuff happen where you 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 giving us hope as a as a as a culture. You know, a lot of basketball players, and we say this all the time. We, we happen here because we wasn't all-stars. We wasn't on the commercials. Mm -hmm. But in this space, we feel like we the all-stars. That's right. So, but not only that, when we got guys like Paul and KG giving us our props, like you, it means something to us. Mm -hmm. But it started with to be able to say, it's a basketball player that we looked up to as a billionaire. Magic. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, listen, I, I broke a lot of barriers and went through a lot of doors, but also, too, it was some hardship to that, too, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Um, when I first got started, a lot of people didn't loan me money or give me opportunities because I was a basketball player or I was a 6'9 black man. Right. Mm. So I had to prove to them that I did no business. And uh, I finally got my track record of success. And a lot of meetings I took, they were in there snickering and laughing because mm -hmm. they knew they weren't going to give me money. But they wanted everything that came with Magic, the right. picture, uh, would you say something to my son? Mm -hmm. the whole that lifestyle. whole thing, and then turn you down mm. at the end of it, right. right? But I said, you know what? I'm, I, I'm a fighter, man. I'm from the hood, so yeah. I'm gonna keep getting up until you know I make it happen. So I made it happen, and and now we do know that we can be successful out here, mm -hmm. right? And you two are proving that. And um, there's others doing the same thing. We just got to make sure that we're dedicated, we're focused, and not let anybody or anything stop our dreams and our goals. And that's why I love, this is first class, everything mm -hmm. you're doing right now, first class. That's how we got to do it. Appreciate yeah. it. We got to do it first class. Y'all give yourself a round of applause. Yeah, there, no, it's yeah. first class. Showtime first class. Legends. Showtime Mac of Legends. But winning, winning has always been a part of your DNA. Only winning. High school champion, college, right. McDonald's All-American, uh -huh. and Michigan State. Mm -hmm. So this is the question I got to ask. Mm -hmm. How many bags were thrown at you when you went to Michigan State? Uh, <laughs> a lot of people offered me money. I knew it. I knew it. What <laughs> kind of bags, it. though? Oh, they were big bags. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know what? My father, he always gave me life lessons. So here I am. Uh, he said, we're not taking no money. 
Mm. And I said, okay, cool. So I decided to stay close to home because my mother and father and all my brothers and sisters had never missed none of my games, and I wanted that to continue. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a mama's boy, so I love my mother, so I wasn't giving up her fried chicken and none of the yeah, other stuff <laughs> she brought to the table, them hugs and everything, right? So um, my freshman year, we win the Big Ten, go all the way to the final eight. Kentucky beat us. Kansas City had the number one pick, so they called me and said, hey, we want to draft you number one. That's the Kansas City Kings, right? Yeah, they were Kansas City Kings at Good that move. time. So I flew down, met with the dude named Joel Ackerson, the general manager, and he said, hey, I'm going to give you a six-year deal, 200000 a year. So, you know, I got excited. I, I've been broke my whole life. Yeah, I'm like, oh, man, this is great. Ching, ching. And so uh, I, got, I jumped up said, oh, I think that's good. My father grabbed me. <laughs> and he pulled me, drug me outside the door. He said, hold on, we'll be right back. He said, you've been broke for 18 years. You, you can be broke one more year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're not going to one more year, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. So I, you're going back to school. Oof. So I went back to school. Yeah. And I'm glad I did because I finished what I came to college for, which was to win the national championship and uh, mm -hmm. play against Larry Bird in that yeah. unbelievable final. The most watched uh, college championship ever. To That's this right. Day. To, to this, this day. day, still the most watched. And uh, so to be linked with this dude who, you know, you said, man. First, when I first met him, I said, all right, I'm going to see this dude, this white cat can really go like Because the verdict saying, is right? always out on white boys yeah, nigga hoop, yeah, with all yeah, due respect. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's always it's, out. It's, it's, it's respect. This yeah. ain't nothing yeah. bad. So I said, let me see what he can do. But Larry had something that most oh, white boys man. don't have. Just oh, say that. Just keep it real. Man, yeah, Larry, 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 Larry was different he, now. He Larry was different now. He had a little bit of nigger. Yeah, he was different now. He was different now. Larry was different now. That boy, <laughs> he could play, man. He turned it out. We, we played on, on a team in college uh, in a tournament together. This is the first time I ever sat on the bench. Him and I were on the bench. Mm. And um, we were like, the guys in front of us wasn't better than us, but Kentucky head coach was coaching the team, so he started three guys from Kentucky. <laughs> so we said, okay. But when we got in the game, we turned it out. <laughs> but I saw this dude eat Jack Givens up. He was player of the year that year. Kentucky, right? Yeah, from Kentucky. And Larry Bird was just slicing and dicing him. And I said, <laughs> oh, I called home. I said, it's true about this boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was calling everybody. This dude can play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that was my first time seeing him, and then to be out on the court with him in college for that national championship game, and then of course what happened in the NBA. But I would say that uh, we got a chance to change the league. Yeah. You know what? What a blessing it was. He ended up in Boston, and then I ended up out here. My personality was L.A. Hollywood. Right up. His personality was Boston, right. <laughs> and it worked for the whole league, you know, right. so everything was good. Yeah. yeah. So number one overall pick in the 79 draft to the Lakers. So you're spending your first 20 years in Michigan, and then you come out here. Outside of basketball, like, talk to us about L.A., and was it a culture shock? What kind of... What was it when you, I mean, look at him, he's smiling right now. <laughs> he's like, oh, hey, shit. Hey, 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 Shit. It, it was definitely a shock, trust me. <laughs> first of all, I was scared to death coming out here. Um, I stayed in my apartment for the first two years because I come from a small town. And so my first two years, I concentrated on really letting people know that my game was real. Mm. Because, listen, it's hard to come to a city like Los Angeles and all the pressure was already on me because we had won the championship. I'm the number one pick. So I got to I gotta make sure I prove to everybody that I belong in the NBA. So I concentrated on that first. Then after I made my name, then I said, okay, it's club time now. <laughs> <laughs> Turn up. And listen to, listen. Ooh, wee. <laughs> oh, man. Do running with Dr. Bus. Ooh, different. And oh. Hugh Hefner. Different. And the play playmates Ooh. and all that. Oh, it's a different life. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. He's we, starting to sweat up. Hey, 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 well, if these walls could talk, <laughs> if these walls could talk, we had oh some parties in here. Oh, my God, man. That Forum Club. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh it would never be nothing like that ever again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, that was before cell phones Cameras, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Social media. All right. You can do a lot of stuff then. Yeah, because nobody would record. Ah. Right. But, but we, had, we had a good time. We had a good time, and uh, I enjoyed myself. But I, I would say this. Focus first on winning. We were able to accomplish that, and then we partied after that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it was a great time. I'm, I'm glad I ended up here. It's been a beautiful, beautiful uh, relationship magic in L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, they go together, synonymous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. synonymous. So um, your rookie year, go to the finals versus Dr. J. You're able to beat them. Finals MVP as a rookie. But before we get to the finals. At <laughs> Before we get to that finals experience, Dr. J is someone you looked up to. Yeah. I heard in college he kind of rolled out the red carpet to you. Explain that story about Dr. J. Yeah, so uh, I was leaving school, and um, I called him up. And so he said, hey, I said, hey, what is it like leaving? You left, so I want you to tell me what it's like for me to leave Michigan State early. And so he was explaining it to me on the phone, and then he said, I'm, 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 I'm going to do you one better. <laughs> Fly out to Philly and hang out with me for the weekend. I said, what? <laughs> doc? No, Doc. That's the Doc. This is Dr. J. Right. Saying a young fella can come hang with him, and he put me up at his crib at the big mansion? Yeah. How'd he pick you oh, up? Oh, a limo. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, a brother was like, oh, shoot. I'm calling everybody. I'm with Dr. J at his house. And so, you know, I'm, li I'm sitting there living in, in the living room, and he's talking to me, and, and I'm, I'm just zoning out. Like, I can't even believe it. I, I've always had Doc's on. Yeah. So now I'm with him? Oh, it was crazy, man. So we hung out the whole weekend. Wife took great care of me as well. I went to a couple playoff games. He was in the playoff. He gave me some great advice. And then, here it is, seven months later, I'm playing the brother in the NBA Finals. 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 My idol. I'm playing him in the NBA Finals. That fast. And so we, so I said, man, I love you, but I got to take him got out. To. Yeah. Ain't no I got choice. to take him out. Ain't no choice. But when he came down that middle, I mean, on that right side, yeah. and cuffed that ball on Coop. on Coop. Yeah. Coop made a bad business decision by jumping. Remember he rocked thinking? it? <laughs> Bam! I said, oh, 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 man. And then the other one was he came down the right side. And he jumped out of bounds. And he started walking. The finger roll, yeah. In the air. <laughs> in the air. In the air. Fro, fro going back. Bunted against the glass is good. I said, man, this dude is too much, man. Yeah, he was See, he was doing that George stuff before Michael. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. people forget that. Yeah. yeah. He was the first dude walking in the air. Oh, man, it was so much fun playing against Doc and that we won. But, but talk, talk about, talk yeah, about, yeah. I was about to say, talk about yourself a little yeah, bit. Thank so you, Kareem thank went you. down. Uh, you're a rookie, 20 years old? Yeah, 20 years in old. In the NBA Finals, the only, first and only rookie to ever win Finals MVP. Talk to these people that didn't follow the game back then and, and, and what it was like and, and the numbers you put up. Slid to the center, though. <laughs> center. From point guard to center. Well, you know, again, man, I... So he gets... Kareem gets hers in game five. And so... I get to the airport, everybody's head is down because Kareem can't play. I said, so what? Kareem can't play. We're still going to win. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they looked at me like, rookie, go sit down. We, we can't beat Philadelphia without Kareem. I said, man, we're going to win this game. And they was like, uh, we can't do it, Irvin. I said, so I got to do something, Matt. I said, I got to do something to get these guys going. So Kareem would always sit in 1A. That was his seat. So I asked the flight attendant, could I go on a plane first? So I went and sat in Kareem's seat. And as every Laker came by, I said, never fear. Magic is here. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and they, they, they were like, this dude is crazy, you know? So they laughed. 
So I had five hours all the way flight from L.A. to Philadelphia to work on that mindset and attitude. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't think you're going to win, you're, mm, you're not going to win. It's over. Yeah. You, it's, it's over. So I told him, man, we're going to win this game. And so I told the coach, I'm going to play center. He was like, he was like, he looked at me like, yeah, have you ever played center? I said, yeah, I played center in high school. He said, man, that was two or three years ago. I said, I'm going to play center tomorrow against Caldwell Jones. Mm. So long story short, you know, I scored 42 points, Ooh. 15 rebounds, seven assists. 15 we ended up rebounds. winning the game. And it was a blessing, too. And to be named NBA Most Valuable Player of the Finals was a, a true blessing. But to win the game. Yes. Again. First and foremost. At, all the other stuff don't matter. Right. Just win the game. So we won the championship. So that was my first one. And then I became the third guy ever in NBA history. College. Come yeah. out of college. Back to back. That's right, to go back to back. So mm -hmm. it's a, bit, a blessing. <laughs> a lot of history. Talk to us about your and Kareem's relationship at the beginning. Because obviously the energy you carry, he was more reserved, mm -hmm. quiet to himself. Mm -hmm. I remember he hit a game winner and you jumped on him and he got <laughs> mad. But talk to us because you came and brought a different energy to this team, high-fiving and, yeah. and, and out there about it. How long did it take Kareem to adjust to what you were selling? Yeah, it took him all season that first year. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, they thought I was coming in to take over the team. And I told him on the first day of training camp, I said, listen, man, I'm here to help you. I said, where do you like the ball? He said, what? I said, what do you like the ball? I said, you like it high, you like it in the middle of your chest, you like it low. He said, no, I like it high. I said, that's where it'll be every single time. Mm. I said, I'm here to help you be more successful. So <laughs> that first game, he hits a sky hook from the free throw line. Now, not, not from down low, mm -hmm. from the free throw line to win the game in San Diego. So I go running, I jump, and I'm holding. Choke, choking him and hugging him. <laughs> and I didn't let go for about two or three minutes. Because I had never seen a shot like that, a game winning shot like that. So he got me to the locker room. Rookie, come here. Don't ever do that. We have 81 more games to go. We can't be this high after game one. Mm -hmm. So all the players now are looking. So now I got to make a decision. That's right. So you everybody's looking at me in the locker room like, what you going to do, rookie? So I turned around and said, you hit a shot like that 81 more times. You know he's taller than me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to jump in your arms 81 more times. <laughs> and that showed him that I wasn't going right. to change. You can't intimidate me, yeah. and I wasn't going to change. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be who I am while I let you be who you are. So them first 50 games, you know, all the other fellas, we high-fiving, chest bumping, we having fun. He would score just one down. Yeah. <laughs> We score, we hot vibe yeah, each on, other. Man. It's so time. about the right when the playoff started, he did a hard dunk on somebody. So he came out looking for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> he looking for the chest yeah, bump. Yeah, now, now he want a chest bump. <laughs> now he want a high five. We were like, oh, yeah, we got him. Yeah. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> so it was a beautiful thing, man, to see him enjoy himself. Right. Yeah. So what did he say to me just recently? At the, we had the Showtime reunion in Hawaii. He said, Irvin, you showed me that I could show my emotion and enjoy the game. Mm. You changed me. Have fun. So that was a beautiful thing, That's man. That's dope. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, two titles in three years. Pat Riley at the helm. Um, you faced Bird three out of four years right there in the finals. Talk to us about that, and then a double-ended question. Where did the, 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 the phrase showtime come from? So first, two, or three, two, two, uh, two titles in three years. Yeah, I, we were, you know, the Lakers, I tell you, it was just beautiful because we had everything we needed. You know, when you think about we had Norm Nixon was the other guard. Jamal Wilkes was a small forward. My first year, Jim Jones uh, was a power forward with Kareem at center. That unit was, man, just fantastic. When we won that second one, here come James Worthy coming in. It was just beautiful. We all played our role. Michael Cooper was such a big, uh, played a big role in us winning because Coop could have started for any team in yes, the league. Yes, indeed. Could have started for any team. 
and he, he decided that six-man role was great for him, and uh, he would shut everybody's, uh, whoever the high score was on the opponent's team, he would take them and really shut them down. So uh, we just played so well together, and we were running. And so Showtime came in because, man, I was coming down that fast break down the middle. <laughs> and, man, I get the no looking left, right, <laughs> throwing it between my legs, behind my back. And then, you know, the brothers, Byron Duncan, James Duncan, Kareem Duncan, and the people would just go so crazy. Because I told them, I said, listen, when I give it to you, I did my part. Right. I got them up out <laughs> their seats. See, I got them up out their seat. You just got to Now you got to do the rest. Right. <laughs> See? Now, if you don't do the rest, I ain't going to give it to you no right. more. <laughs> so them brothers said, we got it. We got it, Herb. Yeah. They used to call me Buck. They, Buck, we got it. So they go in. I said, once I give it to you, then they were finishing, man. The people would go crazy. That's yeah. where Showtime came in. You know, it was a show within yeah. the game. and. They started calling us the Showtime Lakers, and it was beautiful. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Hollywood, Showtime, it's fitting, but also the Laker girls, they kind of changed oh, yeah. the game for cheerleaders or whatever you yeah. want to call them. Paula Abdul was a superstar, but she started as a Laker girl. That's right. Speak to their significance in, I guess we call it cheerleading, for yeah. the NBA because yeah. they were the shit. Yes, and Dr. Buss created all of that. Dr. Buss was a visionary who was a guy who thought outside the box. Mm -hmm. And so he, he said, you know what? I want the show, to, yes, to be the, the team, but we got to create entertainment. I'm in the entertainment, entertainment capital of the world, right. so I want more happening during the game. So that's when he had the young ladies come out and start dancing, Paula Abdul, of course. And then that just turned in right. to real something party. really special. <laughs> and, I mean, it was just, it was just beautiful. Then he had Hugh Hefner come, <laughs> and all the ladies was in uh, lace and, uh, you know, the play, playmates. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I tell people, I mean, I won a championship with Golden State, but there's nothing in the world like being a Laker. When you just sit on the bench sometimes and look in the crowd, you'll see anybody. Anybody and anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything. Yeah. I made sure I had 30 every time I played the Lakers. I mean, it's no place like, it's still nothing like going to a Laker game, you know? And so Dr. Bus, though, created all of that. Right. And he was a genius. To buy the form, the Lakers and the King for $65 million. And now that team is worth four or five billion dollars. Mm, 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 That's mm. crazy, right? And so you got to give him credit and then Jeannie credit right now for carrying on his, his dream and what he started. Agreed. With all that success, here comes the Pistons and the Bulls. What was it like battling against Isaiah and Michael? Oh, I, those were our, The Pistons were probably one of the best defensive teams that's probably played in the finals. But they was physical, that's why, yeah, right? They, they were so physical, but long. When you have people like Dennis and John Sally, I mean, you get past, you might get past Joe Dumar, but you got both of them to yeah, contend with. And Lambeer. Yeah. And Lambeer, he would just slam you, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, Play just hard foul you. And uh, that, that three-guard combination of Isaiah, Joe Dumars, and Vinnie Johnson was unbelievable. Yeah. And so microwave. Uh, we, we won one series against them. And then in 88, and then they came back and beat us in 89. And then Michael, it was their turn. Uh, we were on the decline. They were on their way up. And when we played them in 91, you could tell that the Pistons had prepared them yep. for the championship. Yeah. <clears throat> Michael was ready to finally win. Scotty was ready to play his role as well. And um, that's when they beat us, and it started their run. So you all have runs, right? And so we had our run. The Celtics had their run. It was the Pistons' turn, then the Bulls' turn, and on and on and on. So we just had a recent debate on our show that was brought up by Freddie Gibbs. Um, I don't... You were part of a dynasty. Was the Pistons team a dynasty? Um, <clears throat> when you win back-to-back, -back, you got to say 
if they're not a dynasty, they're close to it, right? Okay. Because is it three times? Is it three? Is it multiple yeah, runs? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's like hard. There's no, no, there's nothing in the rule book that just determines what a dynasty is. Yeah, but yeah, that was hard a real to say. debate. So I guess it's up to every individual to say what they think a dynasty is. But um, let me tell you something. Winning back-to-back -back is uh, very difficult. Yes. Very yes, difficult. Yes. So give them a lot of credit going back-to-back -back and, uh, and showing people that uh, they were as good as advertised. Yeah. So uh, especially with Isaiah's leadership. When every time they do a top 75 or bring all the top players together, it's obvious that you are the glue. Everybody comes around you, magic. It seems like you keep everything together. Like all, even all the older guys, like everybody's around you. You got everybody laughing. You just the life of the party. What's your take on the back and forth with Isaiah and Mike right now? I don't like it. Right. I think they should be done with that. Listen, we played when we played. We all had to dislike each other to win a championship. We all had to do what we had to do. But now, uh, what Michael is doing uh, is incredible to be an owner in the NBA to uh, his shoe is still number one. <laughs> I mean, you can put all those guys' shoe sales together. Still not they touching Mike. Yeah. They can't even mess no. with Michael Jordan's shoes. And so, and then Isaiah is a businessman himself. His wine is yeah, real yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. And all the things that he's doing. So why, why are we still... Right. Living in the past. Yes. I think only magic can fix that shit. Yeah, I'm well, just gonna be well, honest. I'm, a, I, I, only I'm, magic I'm, I'm definitely going to try, man, because <laughs> they should be We past all look it. up to both of them, yeah. right? We yeah. look up to both of them. Yeah, right. and, and I, th they're my boys. Right, right. <laughs> so I, I guess I'm going to have to be the one to bring yeah. them together on, because... For the, culture, for the culture. For the culture. We want to see... Right. I, we wanna see Z Zeke and uh, Mike somewhere having a drink together, man, for the culture. There man. you yeah. go. We there you go. There maybe you go. a joint. Yeah, maybe a joint. <laughs> 1991, your career was halted, mm -hmm. but you defied the odds, played in the All Star game, mm -hmm. helped the Dream Team win the gold, mm -hmm. which was unbelievable. Yeah. You know, we taken our hats off to you many a times, but this was just the ultimate. Mm -hmm. What was your mental during that time? Yeah. Um, you know, when you go through a life, threatening situation, it definitely changes you. I'm always an up guy. That was probably my lowest point in my life. And so thank God that, you know, the medicine that was available at that time could keep me here for a long time, as well as I did everything I had to do to be here a long time. Right. And so, um, and then when I think about playing on the dream team, that was amazing because um, I've always wanted to, on my bucket list, I just wanted one time to play with Larry and Michael, just mm. one time. And now I get a chance to represent the country, play on the dream team, play with Michael, for, make a pass to him, make a pass to Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, Scottie Pippen, Patrick Ewing, David Robinson, um, Clyde Drexler, Stockton. Chris Mullen, yeah. Stockton. So it was really amazing for me to be able to be on that team and us crush everybody by over 42 <laughs> points a game. <laughs> And uh, I think opened the game up Absolutely. to all global the game. international players. Global That's right. It, it, it became a global game after that. So uh, it was a true blessing. And also, too, it, it helped me understand that I was going to be here a long time. Mm. Yeah. What were those practices like? I mean, you hear, you see docu-series and docs. They say that's kind of when you handed the torch over to Mike. Because I'm sure you guys got more out of the practices than you got, you got out of the the actually game. playing. You're right. We practice, man. When you got that, you got 10 egos out on that court like Best that. Best in the world. Yes. Going at each other every single day. So one game, he decided to say, okay, the East versus the West. So all the East guys, Jordan, Pippen, Bird, Barkley, and Ewing, bam. And then all the West guys, Malone, uh, Robinson, uh, Drexler, Mullen, Mullen mm -hmm. and, and Stockton. Stockton. So we all played against each other. So we were, man, we were going at each other and talking stuff. So Charles Barkley took Malone one time and he scored. I said, come on, Carl, you got to get his ass back. You got to get his ass back. So get out on that block and get him back. So I threw it to him. He scored. They come back. They scored. We scored. So we were talking stuff. So finally, we got on a little run. So we scored about eight in a row. They didn't score. Timeout. So Michael walking back, 
I don't usually talk trash, but I had to that time. <laughs> so I said, Michael, if you don't turn into Air Jordan, we're going to blow y'all out. <laughs> Man, he started turned sweating. <laughs> it was old. That tongue went long. <laughs> <laughs> you know when that tongue comes out. It's over. It's a problem. He about, he about to do something. <laughs> Boy, that dude came out that timeout. He scored about four straight threes. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And I went, oh, man. Then he came down. I got to show you this one. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. So, I won't hurt myself. Okay. <laughs> so he stole the basketball. He coming down the right side. He takes off. David Robinson coming this way. So Mike just cuffed him. And he just looked at it. In the air. And he kept looking. He kept looking. He kept looking. <laughs> he went all the way down, Jack. He did a 360. Ooh. Ooh. Bam! And ducked. I said, that's it. That's, that's the, it. It's that, over that's now. That's him. It's over now. That's him. So, so he just looked at me, too, to let me know. Yeah. I'm coming. It's your <laughs> fault. I'm here, I'm here. It's your that's your fault. fault. <laughs> you know who got me to do this? You. Yeah. So uh, we got upstairs, and uh, Larry Bird and I sitting down. So he come in with his cigar. Whew, got his drink. <laughs> so how old is he right now? He's 26, 27? Yeah, yeah, young. Young you know. boy. Yeah. yeah. So... I just want y'all to know. <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> yeah. He says, it's my league now. Yeah. yeah. He said, MJ, you had your turn. Larry Bird, you uh, had your uh, turn. Uh, uh. Now it's my league. Uh, I, I love it. And we all bow down. Yeah. You right. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. yeah. I love it. <laughs> hey, it was never a time where you and MJ even thought about trying to play together or nothing, ever? No. The no. league wasn't like that. You know what? Y'all was wanted to compete. I, yeah, I, I wasn't a guy like that. Yeah. Mm. I never wanted to play with nobody but my dudes. Yeah. yeah. I was good. Yeah. And um, I've always been a dude, wherever I end up, that's, that's who I'm rolling with. Rolling. Yeah, I love you it. You know, and so uh, even pickup games, I never tried to get all the name dudes. Yeah. I tried to just get go dudes who want to play. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I like that underdog thing anyway. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Let's go beat these dudes over here. Yeah. And so that was always my mindset, and, uh, and I'm glad. But I would say this. That's what makes sports special, right? Yeah, competitiveness. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. you know, everybody joining each yeah. other. Yeah. You know, go make it happen. Yeah, yeah. right. If you're the best, you gon' you go, you got to go up against them guys yeah. anyway. Greek freak, that's what Greek freak. Forgive free. me, I just flew in and I worked out this morning. Shout out, just trained, been hydrated. Let me pee. Give me two seconds. I'll be right back. Be back in two minutes. Y'all talk amongst yourself. I'll be right back. I've been holding this shit in for thirty minutes. Give me two minutes. I'll be right back. Where's the bathroom? I, I love it. I love it, Jack. I love it. <laughs> that that's why your oh, show. Man. That's why your show is a big hit. Oh my. <laughs> Goodness, uh, Anything can happen. Nothing he does surprises me. <laughs> Nothing he does surprises me, bro. <laughs> hey, I didn't see you over here. What's up, boy? How you feeling, baby? Hey, baby. You. Everything you. straight? Good to see you. Good to see you. You good? Let me tell Thank you for coming. Why you here? Come on, Pete. Everybody give a round of applause for Paul Pierce. The truth is in the building. Come on, look. The truth is in the building. OG Burke. Give him a mic. Give him a mic. Give him a mic. All right, hold on. I'm going to say just one story. <laughs> Tell him when you took no, over the no, Magic no, Johnson no, game. No, 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 no. <laughs> how that went south. Oh, hey, how that went south quick. <laughs> no, look. Quick. This was when, when we talking about the UCLA pickup runs. So this is when Magic was retired. And Matt played up there in college. Uh -huh. Matt, Magic used to come up there with his own team. He bring his own five. <laughs> a bunch of old dudes. He retired. <laughs> I'm a young dude in the league. I'm a rookie. Yep. So he never, I never seen him lose a game in the pickup runs. And this is Magic about 10 years retired already. Yep. So he come, I'm guarding him in the post. The game is tied up 6-6. Six, six, we going to seven. I'm like, all right, I got Magic. Magic go up, shoot the hook. I challenge the shot. He missed the hook. We get the rebound, throw it ahead. We score. Game over. Magic looked down like, 
No, nah, no, nah, that don't count. That's a foul. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even tell you. He said, bring that back, yo. He said, y'all bring hey, that back. Hey, hey, J-Nack, the hey, fingers. He look at me, he look at me like, you know that's bring a foul. That like, you know that's a foul, young fella. I didn't even touch him. He, he put the ball in, he get the ball back in the post, shoot the hook, and win the game. Oh, ain't no way you can be magic. Uh, no. Uh-oh, hey, hey, where you going? Where you going? Where you going? Take your mic back. So, so, so. So, these were all my little brothers, right? So, Paul, oh, Reggie Miller, all the guys playing up there. Oh, Baron Davis. Baron. Oh, yeah, my, my main man. And so, I always told them, I'm going to teach them one thing, and that's to understand that everything's not going to go their way in the league. So, the reason I called that foul was to make him stronger at the end of the day, right, right, right? And Reggie, yourself, everybody remember all them stories. But the thing that I wanted to do happened. Look at all of my champions, all of them doing great in life. And so we, we, we used to love, man, those games and those pickup games are legendary. There'll never be anything like that ever again. And man, remember, people had to sit out, couldn't even play sometimes. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, come I on. like that. I appreciate <laughs> that. Son. Son. Anything over, anything over. I heard y'all hold a little on, bit. Hold on. Can hold you on. hear me? Hey, hey, check, check, check. Since you didn't walk up here, <laughs> Paul ended up taking over Magic's game. That's right. Hit right? Him, hit, I, hold hit, on, no, stop. Let hit, me. Let him bear. Let me. Let me. And I get invited to the Magic Johnson Classic after he didn't pass it to him and BD. <laughs> yeah. This way it went, it went from a celebrity game in, sta- in, uh, in uh, Staples. Yep. Everybody's there. Players having a good time. Gatorade on the sideline. <laughs> so when I'm there and they in control of it, yeah. All the players got double cups with Bach on them on the yeah. sideline, checking in the game. <laughs> Everybody drinking Bach on the sideline. <laughs> oh. Thanks, P. Thank you, P. Yeah, That's exactly. Exactly. It was a good two-year run. But, I mean, how, you, how am I supposed to come after Magic Johnson? Yeah, you still had a good time, though. Yeah, yeah you still the man. Good too, y'all. Good yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, my God. Now I heard, I mean, I, obviously Paul told you stories. This is when I, so this is me, again, idolizing this man, coming to uh, college at just turned 18, and Magic is playing pickup games with us. But I quickly learned you can never beat Magic. Bring that back, bring that back. You can back. never beat Magic. Bring that back. It was bring it back. <laughs> you can contest it, play good defense and not foul him, but if it's point game, you're never going to score. <laughs> That point, ever. But you know what? Ever. That, that's every OG in yeah, every ever. neighborhood. That's right. Every that's neighborhood right. come that's up right. every OG. At, at some point, you just stop getting mad. Yeah. At some, yeah, that's that's at no. some point, you no. just stop no. getting mad. No. No. Hold, hold on, hold on. Oh, so here now, we go. So now I'm not playing no more. I'm right. on the sideline. Guess who calling all the fouls in? <laughs> <laughs> He learned quick, huh? He learned quick. <laughs> yes. Now it was yes. your turn. And Reggie's turn. Yes. Yes. I mean, those are some legendary games. I mean, oh, talk yeah. about... I, there's rumors that, you know, Wilt came up there one time and you guys were talking shit back and forth and... Oh, listen, we had... You every, like summer runs every were different. great player came to UCLA to play. Um... Moses Malone, you you name it, they all came up. Dominique, Isaiah, Marco, you name them, they all came to run. And uh, I remember Akeem came, Mm. and Akeem was late. And you know, we had a rule, you can't come after a certain time, you can't get on a team, because there were so many NBA players. That's Akeem, though. So, uh, I know, that's what everybody said, too, right? (laughs) And I said, man, I'm sorry, man, They, they already got all the teams and we're playing. Man, do you know he got so mad the next day he came? Remember, he blocked. He must have blocked about 20 shots. <laughs> I mean, he just was so upset. He said, Magic, I just want to play, and you didn't let me play. So he just dominated the mm, action. Mm, I mm, mean, that's, mm. 
That's how great it was, pickup yeah. games back in the day. So we better get back to the show, because yeah, yeah. we'll be talking about this all night. Uh, transitioning <laughs> from basketball, uh, you end up calling it quits in 96, mm -hmm. um, and transitioning into business, and, and your focus was investing black and, you know, revitalizing communities. Mm -hmm. Before we get into that, talk to us about some of your mentors, because you had mentors that were kind of running the game and how important that was to your success after basketball. Well, Matt, you know, listen, I knew basketball, but I didn't know business. So I wanted to make sure I surrounded myself with people who knew business that could teach me right. business. So Dr. Jerry Buss, the late owner of the Lakers, became my first mentor, Michael Ovitz, all these different men, Howard Schultz of Starbucks, became my mentors because I wanted to pick their brain on what made them successful so I could get that knowledge and then build my businesses in the black community. So they gave me the knowledge that I needed so that then I could take it to the hood yes. and build my business, but also put people of color to work. Yeah. Once I got <clears throat> all the information that I needed, I started with the number one thing that we were doing back then with our family, which was going to the movies. Mm -hmm. So I, I did a deal with Sony and I built Magic Johnson Theaters because I did the research. We were the number one group of people going to the movies, yep. but there were no movies in our, no movie theaters in our community. So I built movie theaters and man, my first theaters came in top 10 highest grossing theaters in the nation, my, the first theater I built. And I knew then I said, oh, I'm gonna be successful. And so when, after that success, I went up to Seattle and told Howard Schultz that black people, we like coffee too, right? <laughs> and we love Starbucks. We like coffee too. And so uh, I said, let's build some Starbucks in our community. And sure enough, uh, we did a deal that's still unbelievable today uh, where he allowed me to build 125 Starbucks mm. in 40 different markets across the United States, proving people wrong because everybody thought it wouldn't work in the black community. Right. right. And we proved everybody wrong. It did work. Um, I made some little tweaks to the desserts because we don't eat scones, so I took <laughs> the scones out <laughs> and put in peach cobbler, yeah, sweet potato yeah, pie, yeah, things yeah. that resonate with our community. Yes, yes. And uh, sure enough, uh, it wasn't just for the Starbucks. It also became a meeting place in the black community. Mm. We didn't have meeting places right. in nice. our community where we can meet our friends or our mothers could meet her girlfriend and so mm -hmm. on. And so Starbucks became a meeting place and uh, it was beautiful, man. So that's what jump-started my business career and so sure enough, it took off from there. One business deal that didn't come to fruition for you, Nike. Oh you offered the Nike deal, and today the estimated worth would have been five point two billion. <laughs> I mean, you're doing fine, but talk to us about that Nike situation. Oh, though, the reason man. why you chose thanks Colorado. It would have been thanks an easier B. Thank, thanks a lot, uh, Matt. <laughs> he, st he still got a B, but it oh, could have been on, an easier man. B. Yeah, yeah. So here I am, uh, just winning the national championship against Larry Bird, and three companies came in. So Converse, Adidas and Nike. Nike was just a year too old. And so Converse offered me the most money. So you know when you grow up broke, you, you take the money. So um, Phil Knight came in and said, hey, I can't offer you the same type of money, but I can offer you stock. <sighs> <laughs> wasn't trying to hear that then. I wasn't trying. I wasn't trying to hear that then. I, I, and I didn't know nothing about it. And my family didn't come from money. Yeah. See, that's mm -hmm. one thing that hurt us sometimes. When you don't come from money, you, you don't, don't know. know what's... I didn't even know what right. stocks was at right. that time, right? right? So I passed on the stocks. Damn. Can you imagine? Damn. 45 years. Oof. $5 billion Oof. that stock would have been worth today. Oof. But like Jack said, you're the reason. Why, yeah, you this still is, made a beat. You're the reason why we wore Converse though, because I got me a pair of Magics too. But like, <laughs> no one would have touched Converse. I, I mean, got Larry a blister right his. now from '95. <laughs> still <laughs> from the damn shoes. <laughs> but but let me say this. You know, when you don't know something, um, that's okay. It's when you know and then you make then you mistakes. Mess up. Right. But I'm also a guy who never looks back. I Damn. live in the moment. Got to. See, I, I hate people who talk about what happened 30 years ago or, or I used to have it going on. Huh? 
What are you doing now? <laughs> it's all about what you're doing yeah, now. Right. Yeah. See, and so I'm I'm a person who live in the moment, mm -hmm. and I'm always moving forward. Always moving Love forward. It. And if something happened to me that wasn't good, I leave it in the past yeah. and I keep moving forward, good. see? I love it. And so that's who I am. So they're telling us our time. Can we get, I know it's past your bedtime. Can we get 15, 21? We've got <laughs> yeah. to get just a couple yeah. more. Go okay. Ahead. We're going to get through this. Okay. Well, shout out to Legends. Uh, obviously, you're one of the greatest legends. I'm going to name some legends right now and talk to us about each one of these individuals. Kobe Bryant. Oh, special. Um, special on the court, special off the court. Kobe changed the game, man. Kobe changed uh, Los Angeles, the NBA. He would work out with anybody. High school, young lady, young man. Ten-year-old, he worked my yeah, twins he, out. Yeah, he loved the game like we all loved it. He was 24-7 involved, so we miss him even today. So we should clap for, for Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, obviously, to our brother Cole. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Uh, Muhammad Ali. Man, he was special because my father, we used to go to the theater. Um, before they had pay-per-view, they had that other thing, closed circuit. So we used, to go, <laughs> we used to go to the theater to watch Ali fight or listen to it on the radio right. with my father. And the first thing I always wanted to do when I finally signed my contract with the Lakers was to go to an Ali fight, and I got a chance after my rookie season that summer, he was fighting, and man, it was the greatest moment because I also got a chance to meet him. And because what he stood for, right? and he was a proud black man, that they gave us all uh, a sense of pride and, um, and what he was able to do, not only in the boxing ring, but outside of it too, uh, was amazing. This one right here. Talk to us about the pajama parties that Prince used to throw in the Magic Johnson Theater. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you brought up something nobody brings up, man. So I, I'm at the crib. <laughs> Here we and, go. And, and my phone and my phone rang. And uh, I said, Who, hello? Magic, this is Prince. <laughs> I said, the prince, prince, prince? <laughs> and he said, yeah. I said, what's up? He said, man, I want to come to your movie theater about 2 a.m. in the morning. I said, prince, we close at 2 a.m. He said, I know, that's why I want to come. <laughs> and I want to bring my own people to the theater. <laughs> and I said, okay, let me make this happen. So... We get to the theater, he has a big bus, and they all are in pajamas, right? And he got the drink, he got everything. They go in, we had the popcorn, everything, and we just let him have it, man. Mm. And he stayed there till four or five in the morning mm. watching movies. It was so much fun, he just kept calling me. That's just dumb. kept doing it. <laughs> but you know what was cool? My greatest thrill was going on tour with him and then going on tour with Michael Jackson. Wow. Man, I went on tour with Michael. That's different, right? Th uh, twice. And so we, we have the last two floors of the hotel so they could run around and play and have fun, right? <laughs> so play. the limos go out. So it's thousands of women screaming out front. So when the limos pull out, they all think we in the limos. So all the girls start chasing the limos down the street. So we would go down the elevator and get in some white vans. Nobody even knew we right. were in the vans, right? We pull up, they already dressed and ready to go on stage. And man, that's where I decided I had to be even better as a basketball player. Michael Jackson. Wow. It's never been nobody like him. This dude was be in the mirror for two hours just working on his moves, Crabs. and it was unbelievable. So that was one of my greatest moments, touring with him and then touring with Prince and seeing how they just turned it out. <sighs> unbelievable. <clears throat> Let me get myself back together. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the Kobe stuff kind of took me off. Yeah. Track. You experienced some of the highs and the lows, but you prevailed through it all. Mm. If it's... 
one thing that you could, oh, some advice that you can give anybody in here about life mm-hmm. and dealing with ups and downs, what would it be? Jack, I think you're going to have ups and downs in life, right? It's how you deal with them, um, how you come through them. Um, I'm a guy who just meets things head on, and then I don't make excuses. Yeah. You know, I'm accountable for everything I've ever done. Mm. And so if it's my fault, I'm going to tell you it's my fault. I'm not a guy, like I said, who make excuses. So I would say, you know, just focus on uh, getting better. Like, my whole thing in life now is in 22, I don't want to be the same man in 23. Right. Right. So how can I improve as a a father, a husband, a a businessman, on and on and on. So I'm about self-improvement, right, and getting better. And so that's what we all should be focused on. And if we can do that, uh, then we're going to be okay. And even when that bad time comes, we'll handle it and then we'll move on. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's going to come. Disappointment always comes. Change always comes. Mm -hmm. But it's how we deal with it. Absolutely. Right, and so I've always been a guy just meet it head on and just keep moving. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, both of you have been through something, but look where you are now. Right, right. Agreed. And the George Floyd thing, what you did. Let's give him a hand, man. Because what Stephen did for that. <laughs> you were a true leader, and made us all take notice and make us all get involved. And that's what I love about you, you you know. And so the things you've been dealing with, see, you talk about me, you've been dealing with something. Your brother just passed, and you're still sitting here. See, that that shows a sign of strength, and we know your heart is heavy, but you're still coming to work, you're still grinding, you're still doing what you have to do. See, that's, that's that's a blessing. So always remember this, somebody is watching. Mm, right. See, somebody is watching. Somebody is watching. And that's either your, your, your friends, your kids, see? See, for black men, it's so important that we excel because somebody at home is watching. See, our little men of worth are watching. Absolutely. And so it's a blessing when my kids tell me, Dad, I'm only successful because I saw you. Wow. So that, that makes me feel good. My daughter got her own eyewear line, but she said, you taught me that I could do this. Yep. And so that's a beautiful thing, yes. see? So again, we're doing it. We're doing it, man. And you got big boy sitting here, mm-hmm. and I saw him be number one in this market, and then he went simulcast, one of the first dudes, I mean, to take his show nationwide, worldwide. I mean, he go to Japan, they go crazy. Yeah, over right? boy. So that's what it's about. So that's why it's special. See, I'm going to do, I give it up. See, I ain't trying to just, oh, right. be focused on me. No, I like to give it up. When, when brothers are doing great things, that empowers me too. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So remember that. So listen, this show is unbelievable. And they talk about they wasn't superstars. No, they superstars. See, you don't have to always be the best at one thing. See, that's not the mark of a great man, is whether you could be the best at other things, mm. or two things, or three things. How can you reinvent yourself? Man, you guys are killing it. Thank killing you. it. Thank killing you. it. Thank you. Well, Magic, we want to thank you for your time tonight. Obviously, knowing how busy you are and just the man you are. The, you know, the, like you said, you, you're responsible for all your actions, and, and, and that's respectable. Um, the barriers you've broken, the wall, you know, the, 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 the heights you've achieved, we need to see it to believe it. And you're someone that has continued to show us that thank you. it's possible. Thank you. And we want to thank you for that. And man, best of luck. Yes, sir. Uh, love to see you as the owner of the NBA team one I, day. I, I, I mean, appreciate that'd it. That'd be great. I, I appreciate it. But How I can we get some money know. with you? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk oh, about that. You, you can definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're, talk about we're, that. we're all three invest in something, and it's going to win, too. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to win. Man, that's a wrap. 
all the smoke. The one and only Madden Johnson. Thank Give you. it up. Thank you, baby. Oh, thank you, you very much. Love, love you, boy. You know that. Thank you. Love you, Michael, I am offering you a chance to atone for what you have done. What exactly are you asking me to do? Tread very carefully. If we do this correctly, every single person will get what they deserve. 